Welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm David Rhodes and I'm at the Guardian Center's Commuter Rail Training Facility. I'm joined today by Scott Brantley. Scott, good to see you. Good to be here. Tell us a little bit about what we have. So what we have here is a training simulator. It's 1,800 linear feet of dual track. We have eight cars in various configurations and we can set them up for all types of training or scenarios. Outstanding. Let's take a look at our scenario for today. Our scenario today is that we have a person stuck underneath the commuter rail car. This person has been hit by the train and is now trapped up underneath a very tight area. We've made sure to notify our rail control, work with our rail police and security to make sure that all the power is shut off and our track is grounded at both ends. So let's take a look at this in real time. Our rescuers have accessed the track through the station and made their way down the rail cars. They brought their initial equipment, a jump kit, rope bag. They have an attic ladder. Any type of short ladder um, will work for access down. And also they know they're going to need some type of rescue basket. Correct. So what the medic's doing is he's looking for, you know, airway. He's checking the ABCs, looking for uh, zangling, hemorrhaging, anything he can do real quick while the victim's still under the track. So a lot of time with these trains, we have amputations that we have to be prepared for. But there are a lot of cases where we have a viable victim, especially near the station where the train is slowed down. Um, so what exactly we have going on here, Scott? Well, you're certainly right. Uh, most of these accidents do occur near the station. Uh, tremendous amount of blunt force trauma. So what our medic's trying to do now is he's trying to do a quick primary assessment to find out if our patient is viable and what needs to be done to take quick life-saving measures. Uh, the other guys are preparing uh, to do a rescue to extricate the victim from under the train. So the big thing here is we can't do a whole lot with that victim stuck up under the train, so we got to get them out and work on them. We can keep the airway open and monitor them from that way, but we got to get them out as quick as possible. So what are they using to get this victim out? So it looks to me like what they've done is taken a rope and just tied a simple handcuff knot around the ankles, and the team is working in conjunction with the medic to maintain uh, care of the patient. Uh, and they're going to be pulling them out onto a Stokes basket here. All right, so they got to work them up over the rail. They've positioned their basket right in a good spot. Obviously, they're going to try to maintain C-spine control and all of that, but the, the main uh, function here is to get this victim out, get them in the back of an ambulance, and get them to a, a hospital to surgery. All right, so that was a pretty quick operation. Uh, basic ropes and, and skills employed there. Stokes basket so we can get this patient up quickly. So the guys are just going to button him up and then they're gonna get him back out to the platform. That's correct, good job. All right, we took a look at a scenario where a person was up under the train. You have to realize this is only one small piece of what would be happening overall with this scenario. We have rail control, we have the station to worry about, um, we have the logistics of getting our equipment in and out, so there would be a lot of other players in here. We just focused on strictly removing that victim. We hope you enjoyed today's edition of Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm David Rhodes here with Scott Brantley. 